Do you hate your state? Because if so, you're not alone. 35% of Americans actually moved in 2020, and 56% say they plan on moving this year. Now Americans are moving for a variety of reasons, ranging from lifestyle to retirement to family to jobs, but the number one reason people moved last year was to reduce living expenses. And it makes sense. 2020 left many people unhappy and stressed while paying a ton to live in a cramped big city. So as more and more companies allow their employees to work remotely, more and more people are able to live where they they want to live, and most of them are picking the states on this list. Now to be fair, net migration isn't the only reason these states are growing. Natural increase, or the total number of births minus deaths, is another contributing factor to population gain in most states. So natural increase plus net migration is how we got this list. But whether you're unhappy in your current state or just want to snatch up property before prices go ballistic, these are the top 10 fastest growing states for 2021. And let's hit 5,000 likes if you want to see the best states for 2021. Number 10. North Carolina. While the most common reasons people move to the Tar Heel State are for jobs, retirement, or family, there are so many reasons why North Carolina is one of the best states to live in. From the Great Smoky Mountains and gorgeous Outer Banks, to the temperate weather that's rarely too hot or cold, to the booming economy and family-friendly environment. Not to mention, the statewide median home cost of $231,000 is pretty affordable. Especially for all the people moving from Florida, Virginia, New York, and California, which are where most of the newcomers come from. For locals, on the other hand, the median household income of just $57,300 has some catching up to do. But to be fair, that number's also a bit misleading as the rural areas are lagging way behind the cities, which are actually some of the best in this country. Raleigh, for instance, is one of the safest cities in the nation, and its median household income is over 80 grand. So it makes sense that its metro population grows by 2% each year. And Charlotte, the second largest banking center in the U.S., grew by 1.7% last year. Overall, North Carolina's population increased by 1.03% in 2020 to 10.7 million. Number nine. Actually, scratch that. We're going to give a quick honorable mention to Georgia. The Peach State's population grew by 1.01% last year, which was just barely 0.02% less than North Carolina. But while people are moving to North Carolina for a variety of reasons, the majority of people moving to Georgia are doing so for jobs, mainly in the Atlanta area, where the economy is thriving with a median household income of nearly $72,000. That, combined with the cheap cost of living, Living where the median home costs just 228 grand has resulted in more minorities and college educated young professionals moving here. Because of this, the state actually voted Democratic in this past presidential election for the first time in nearly 30 years. Actual number nine, Florida. Things really start heating up with the Sunshine State. Or is that just the humidity? Either way, Florida actually had the second most new transplants of any state in 2020. But since retirement's the biggest reason people move here, there's actually a natural population decrease each year as the retirees aren't having kids or living in the state very long. So even though the current population is 21,944,000 and over 600,000 new residents moved here last year, the net population gain was only 1.1%. But Florida is no longer just a place for retirees. Many of the cities are actually turning into places young people want to live, work, and play in, as the state offers one of the fastest growing economies and the best universities in the nation. So it makes sense that so many people from the Northeast and Midwest are moving here. I mean, who wouldn't prefer no state income tax and year-round warm weather while being surrounded by the ocean and beautiful white sand beaches at a fraction of the cost. Although those pristine beaches also mean hurricanes. And then of course there's the fact that much of the state is slowly sinking, so you might lose your house altogether. But hey, at least the median home value is just 273 grand. Number eight. Colorado. While Florida has the second lowest average elevation of any state at just 100 feet, Colorado's average elevation of 6,800 feet is the highest. And you know what else is higher here? The cost of living. The median home value is $449,000 and it's $505,000 in Denver. But that's probably still pretty affordable for a lot of the people moving here since the majority of them are from California. Not to mention, the economy has been booming over 
over the last decade with the median household income at $77,000 statewide and $86,000 in Denver. So the poverty rate's actually among the lowest in the nation at just 9.3%. And when you consider all the great food and beer, top-notch schools, hip city amenities, and of course, the outdoors, most residents find the expensive cost of living to be well worth it. So it's no surprise that so many new people want to join them, with the population increasing by 1.19% over the past year to 5,893,000 overall. Number 7. Washington. You might be wondering why Washington's population increased by 1.21% last year to nearly 7.8 million, despite the gloomy weather and expensive home prices with the median home value at $478,000 statewide and $816,000 in the Seattle area. And, well, there's actually a few reasons. The excellent education system, impressive infrastructure, and gorgeous nature for starters, but 53% of newcomers last year moved for the economy, which was actually the second fastest growing economy in 2020. The median household income of $79,000 and $102,000 in Seattle both increased by around 5% last year. Not to mention, the minimum wage of $13.69 is the highest in the country, and there's no state income tax. So while it is expensive to live here, only 9.8% of the population lives in poverty. And compared Compared to California real estate and taxes, which is where most of the new residents move from, Washington is basically Mississippi, aka dirt cheap. Number 6. South Carolina While North Carolina is growing fast due to its booming economy, South Carolina is actually growing even faster with the population increasing by 1.27% over the past year to 5.28 million, but it's for an entirely different reason retirees. Yep, 39% of people who moved here last year did so to relax in a sleepy warm beach town like Hilton Head or Myrtle Beach, which is actually one of the fastest growing cities in the US with the metro population increasing by 3.6% each year. And what retiree wouldn't want to live in Myrtle Beach? It's on the beach, there's warm weather, and the median home value is just $206,000. Then again, South Carolina as a whole is super affordable with a median home value of just 210000 Now, 26% of the new residents actually did move here for work, although outside of Charleston, which is one of the best cities to live in the country with plenty of good jobs, there just isn't much economic opportunity. The median household income is only fifty six grand. the poverty rate is 13.8%, and the healthcare, education, and infrastructure all suck. So if you're not retired and want to move to a Carolina, I'd suggest North Carolina. Number five. Texas. The second largest state by total area is also the second largest state by population. Although at the rate it's growing and the rate California is shrinking, it'll probably be number one within the next 40 years. Most of the newcomers are moving to Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, or Houston, which makes sense since 53% of them said they moved here for a job. And boy, oh boy, do the major Texan cities have some jobs. Dallas and Houston are two of the best cities to live and save money in, with diversified economies leading to median household incomes of $72,000 and $69,000, as well as great affordability with median home values of $248,000 and $207,000 respectively. Plus, there's no state income tax, so you get even more bang for your buck. Of course, Austin is a bit more expensive, with a median home value around four hundred eighty-three grand. But it's also consistently ranked as the best city to live in the U.S., with great weather, amazing food, tons to do, and so many good jobs, leading to a median household income of eighty-one thousand dollars. So it's no wonder it's been the fastest-growing major city since two thousand ten, with the metro population increasing by thirty-six percent over the past eleven years. And to be fair, since Californians account for the most new newcomers to Texas, to them, even Austin's still cheap. Overall, Texas's population increased by 1.28% last year to 29.73 million. Number four, 
Utah. There's a big jump as we get into the top four states, as Utah's population grew by 1.66% last year to 3.31 million residents. But while 52% of Utah transplants move here for the job opportunities, the number one economy in the nation and median household income of $76,000 aren't the only reason for the population increase. It's no secret that Utah's a very, uh, family-oriented state, and the people here sure are having families because natural increase has actually accounted for 77% of growth since 2010. But since most people now know about the thriving economy and cheaper cost of living compared to the West Coast states, 2020 was actually the first year transplants outnumbered newborn babies. Now don't get me wrong, I'm in no way saying Utah's cheap, as the median home value is $408,000 and rose by 14.8% just this this past year. But it is much more affordable than California or Washington, which is where many of the new residents come from. The unemployment rate of 3.1% is also tied for the lowest in the country, so not many people are struggling with a poverty rate of just 8.9%. Oh, and don't even get me started on the beautiful nature. Number three. Arizona. The Southwest is one of the fastest growing regions in the country, and a big part of that is the 1.69% population growth of Arizona. Or should I say the Phoenix metro area, since it accounts for nearly 70% of Arizona's 7.52 million residents. While the terrible schools, high crime rates, and horrible pollution aren't exactly enticing, that sure hasn't stopped Phoenix from becoming the 10th largest metro in the U.S., with around 100,000 new residents annually. But maybe that's because 37% of these transplants are retirees and only care about the hot, dry weather and 300 sunny days a year. Now, to be fair, the state certainly is improving as plenty of young professionals and entrepreneurs have moved here in recent years and are a big reason why Arizona has the fourth fastest growing economy. But the median household income is still just $62,000, which doesn't make the $320,000 median home value very affordable for locals. And this problem is only going to get worse as more and more Californians with their California paychecks move here and buy up home prices. Number two. Nevada. Great weather really isn't overrated, which is a big reason why Nevada's been the fastest growing state over the past 30 years and grew by another 1.74% in 2020. Now, most of this growth can be attributed to the Las Vegas metropolitan area, which, similarly to Phoenix, accounts for 74% of Nevada's 3.186 million residents and is slowly turning into a place all sorts of people actually want to live in. Don't get me wrong, though. Vegas and Nevada still have a long way to go. Aside from having the best infrastructure of any state, statistically speaking, Nevada's probably one of the worst places to live on this list. The schools suck, the air and water quality ratings are even worse, it's the worst state for healthcare accessibility, and while the economy might be the sixth fastest growing of any state, the median household income is still just 63 grand. The main reason people move here is just that Vegas is the closest out-of-state city for most Californians, is much much cheaper, still offers great weather, and has no state income tax. But since so many Californians are moving here, the median home value of $338,000 is also going up way faster than the local jobs can accommodate. Now before we get to number one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and let me know what video you want to see next. But without further ado, number one. Idaho. Idaho's population has been absolutely exploding with a 2.09% growth rate over the past year and an 18.4% growth rate over the past decade, bringing its total population to 1.86 million. And considering the stunning landscapes, charming small cities and towns, and incredible economic opportunities in Boise, which just so happens to be one of the best cities to live in this country, it's really not hard to see why. But although the gem state has the fastest growing and third best economy overall, with wages growing by 8% last year, the median household income is still just $61,000, while the median home value rose 21% last year to $359,000. But that still won't stop people from moving here, because the secret is out. Idaho is one of the best states to live in, and will be by far the fastest growing state of 2021.